And so the Battle of Hunain is very significant for a number of reasons. One, the Prophet ﷺ now has the Meccans with him. So there's a lot of people, and some of them were not Muslims who come out with him. So the army has in it a, a good number of people that are brand new in Islam, and some people who actually, they very well may have become Muslim for whatever reason. You know, their iman is not really firmly established. And they're going out with the Messenger of Allah. Now the other thing is, and Allah says this, right, that you were impressed with your numbers on that day. So, they were, their army now was so vast and powerful, this, no army on the Arabian Peninsula had ever reached this power. So, they, they're actually impressed with their material power. And they're going out to meet uh, the Hawazin, and they think this is going to be uh, really just a simple outing. They're, they're not worried about it. Now, there was a man, Madik al-Nasri, who was uh, a young man but a brilliant uh, warrior. And he actually uh, has, there are several thousand of the Hawazin, and he has them positioned. And one of the things that he does, even despite the fact that one of uh, the older people who was known for his good opinion told him not to do this, he brings out all the women and all of their, these are Bedouins, all of their animals. Now, obviously, one of the wisdoms in this that he doesn't know is this is going to make booty collection very easy for the Prophet ﷺ. In other words, if he defeated them and all their animals were off, far off grazing and things like that, it would have been very hard to collect. But he actually has them bring all of their women and all of their animals, all their camels, all their goats, all their sheep, their horses, everything, and he puts it behind them. And the idea, his idea, is these people are going to fight. Because what's behind them is everything they own. So he puts all their worldly goods behind them, which is why they're fighting. And, this is, and what's behind the, 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 the Muslimun is it's Mecca. It's Allah's house. So here's the, this is the clash of the Muslims and those who oppose Islam. The people who are fighting uh, for Allah and His Messenger and the people who are fighting for dunya. And, and, that, and that's, this is another example of this. So what happens is Khalid uh, goes down into a, into a valley and he's suddenly, uh, see, because this is early, the, the dark, it's still dark and he's taken by surprise. And there's actually a ma'ma'a, uh, 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 it becomes very uh, dispersed and people don't realize what's happening. And people start fleeing from the battlefield. And some of the Qurayshis are actually happy about this. They like the fact that they're getting rooted because they've been humiliated the day before. And now they see these same people in a state of humiliation. So they're actually, some of them are pleased. Safwan actually says to some of them who were fleeing, it, it's better we have a Qurayshi liege lord than we have uh, a, a Hawazini. You know, in other words, do you really want uh, somebody from that tribe to be over us? Because this is going to be a decisive day. And the, what the Prophet ﷺ does is he, with the group of his closest companions, is actually, and that's the day when he was saying, I'm the prophet, there's no denying, and I'm the son of Ibn Abdul Muttarib. And this is where the Quraysh, you know, he's reminding them also of, that he's a Quraysh. He, he's the messenger of Allah, but he's also a Quraysh. And so, and, and the Hawazin are attacking. So this is obviously uh, going to encourage the Quraysh uh, to defend also their clansmen. And so they basically, uh, the things completely turn around. And, and the amazing thing about it is that the Quraysh recognize something divine happened. I mean, they, they literally recognize something extraordinary happened because suddenly in the midst of it, all this craziness, and this is the point what Allah was showing these people was 
Don't depend on your numbers. Depend on Allah. Because it's not your numbers that are going to give you victory. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't be impressed with your numbers. And, and this is... So, when they came out with all their numbers and Allah completely sent them into a, 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 a chaotic condition where they're fleeing now. And at that point, what calls them back is the Messenger of Allah has Abu Bakr shout on the top of his lungs, remember the tree, the people who made the bay'ah under the tree. And so all these people come back and they fight and they defeat these people. Malik flees to Ba'if. But now the Hawazin have been uh, vanquished and all of their women, their children, and their animals have been taken in booty. So this was a great uh, day. And the Quraysh recognized uh, this. And many of them whose iman was wavering now have really, uh, something's happened. So it was, it was a big uh, event, uh, the Battle of Hunayn. And the Prophet Wasallam. one of the things that he does is he... Uh, he actually sends people now to... Uh, oh, another thing that he mentions that's important is the, the Prophet Sallallahu sister in Rava'a was amongst them because the Bani Sa'ad were amongst uh, the people, the Hawazin that were fighting. And she's saying, I'm the Prophet's sister. And, and uh, so they bring her... Now, another thing that happens because of this and other things is that there are people now who are becoming Muslim and uh, the Prophet ﷺ is in a situation where they've got all of this booty, right? And the Prophet ﷺ tells them to wait. They're not going to distribute the booty uh, just yet. Now, he sends then a group, the army off the fight. He takes counsel and says, let's we should go and take Taif. Madak and Nasari has gone to Taif. The people of Taif are there. And what happens in Taif is that they have, uh, Taif is a fortified city. They have all their food and all their provision inside the city. And they, they uh, spend several days and they don't, uh, they, they don't break the city. And so the Prophet Sallallahu actually takes a shura and one of them says, if a fox goes into a hole, you can go in and try to get it out. Uh, or you can leave and the fox doesn't harm you. And so the Prophet Sallallahu decides to leave uh, by for another day. All right. And he goes back now. This is really an important event because he now is, is going to begin to distribute uh, all of these goods. And the Prophet Sallallahu uh, after he comes back, he goes to Ja'rana, which is just outside of Mecca, and he begins to distribute the wealth. Now, obviously, there's all of these uh, camels. He gives Abu Sufyan a hundred camels. Now, Abu Sufyan, who actually lost his eye, one of his eyes at Taif, Abu Sufyan has been, he's been the leader of the Qurayshis who've been opposing them for over, you know, all these years. And the Prophet gives him a hundred camels, which is, was a great amount of wealth. There were many, many poor Ansar and Muhajirun inside those armies that, that had been fighting with the Prophet all along. And this is probably their greatest amount of booty outside of Khaybar. They've got all this wealth, which to the Arabs is real wealth, more than gold and silver uh, animal, livestock. And the Prophet ﷺ is giving them out. At one point, he actually says to Safwan, they're on camels together. And Safwan has not become Muslim. And there's a whole valley of uh, sheep. And Safwan's looking at it, and the Prophet says, does this impress you? And he says, yeah, it impressed me a lot. And he said, Hiya wa ma fiha lak. Everything, it and everything in it is for you. 